one as they are scheduled for 10. Locked in southpaw, the faster guy, the more polished fighter, technically, the more together fighters. He has some power too, this Mr. Lock, but Escalante, that is his greatest weapon. He can bang. Left hand to the body from Lock. Escalante's one of. I don't think he can win on the outside, Escalante. He's going to want to get close or get Locke to come close. Locke, for the most part, is going to want to be on the outside. Use those quick hands. Use that wingspan. Set traps. Step back. Do it on the front end with the jab. Do it on the back end with counters. Get Escalante to reach. Do a little of your work for you. But you know what, Joe? If Locke wanted to, I'm not saying he should. He should be where he is, on the outside. The quicker guy, where he can do some countering, take advantage of the reckless abandon of Escalante, but Locke could get inside and he could do okay because he throws short punches. Mm -hmm. And even though Escalante, that's his turf. That is his turf inside. But he's wide. He's strong, but he's wide. And Locke could go inside and do that. Punch right inside those shots. Both men able to land body shots here early on. Now Escalante getting that left hand around the side, but good work on the inside from Locke. And you said it, Joe. The good work by Locke inside. He's got the quicker hands, the more concise punches. His hands are going to get there faster than the wide punches of Escalante. They're true. A straight line beats a round line. You've heard your teacher say that. And I know that. Locke has heard his trainers tell him that, and they remind him of that before it started. But the body work, that could be the key here as we talked in the fight plan. Escalante, a good body worker. Locke has a nice, lean, skinny body, a good body to attack. Locke likes to use his legs just a little bit. No better way to take that mobility away. If you ask Escalante, then to go downstairs to the body of Locke. Watch that extra hand movement, please, of Escalante. Every once in a while, you're going to see it. He's going to drop those hands. He's going to he's going to turn those hands inside out. There he comes in a little bit wide. He took one to try to get one on the inside, but you can see what the game plan is and where he needs to be to be at his absolute best. There's a left hook landed by Escalante. Then he gets right to the inside. Right to the body. Good body work by Escalante. And that's where he needs to concentrate. Again, go to that thin, skinny rib cage of Locke. Good pace being set here in our main event. More to come. Stay with us. A Friday night fight. That'll also be from the Hard Rock in South Florida. Round number two of what you can tell is a very good main event already. Good pace, good action, good setting here in El Paso. Cornelius Locke, Antonio Escalante, contrasting styles, but making a good fight so far. Escalante had a 23 to 13 connect advantage in that first round. 15 of those 23 connected punches went to the body of Cornelius Locke. Which is good news if you're rooting for Escalante. I think that's where the punches should be directed. It's one thing that a fighter has to throw punches to win a fight. It's another thing that he has to direct them to the right place. Look at the extra hand movement again. Watch Escalante when he separates. He drops his hands, he adjusts his trunks a little bit, and he's got a really weird habit. There he goes, he drops his hands. But keep watching him. He drops his hands, there he goes again. And then he'll do that, he'll shake his hands. Let's throw the maracas, you know, the... Those things you make the noise with if you're in a band, you know. So, so Teddy, if you want to make sweet music and you're the opponent, that's an opportunity to jump in. You have to know it. You have to recognize it. You would have had to have done your homework like we did and watching the film and singing, and you're looking for it. And as soon as you see it, you're right, Joe. If you're locked, like, you see those hands start to drop? That's when you attack. Good body shot by lock, but... He gets warned. He gets warned. There was a left hand right on the belt line by Cornelius Locke, and he grabs a warning. Now he turns over a right hook, does the southpaw veteran Cornelius Locke. 
Escalante back to the inside. And as you said, Teddy, Locke is ready to meet him there, but a flurry from Escalante up top. I don't think Locke for the whole night should be inside because Escalante's a stronger guy. Locke's better off on the outside. But Locke can go inside because his punches are shorter and faster. And he's got to fight his heart. Locke is not afraid to behave like a fighter and engage you, even if it's always or not always to his advantage. There is blood coming from the left eye of Antonio Escalante. And Locke has been involved with a lot of head clashes. He gets in there close with that head. And there's some good work by Locke himself on the inside. Two more solid body punches by Locke. And now an uppercut and a left hook by a squared up Antonio Escalante. I got to tell you something about Locke. The good news, he's quick, he's tough. He can crack a little bit, he can counter, he's a southpaw. The bad news, he doesn't always snap that jab or use it enough. He allows opponents to get close. As good as he is on the outside, he allows guys to get inside. Action-packed second round, blood from the eye of Escalante Mordecai. And the eye area of Escalante, so that, to me, is maybe a little bit perhaps. of proof, perhaps, that it was not a punch that caused that cut for Escalante. That flash potentially may have been more towards the center of the brow. Now Escalante applying some pressure here early on to start the third round. And Locke meets him for a moment on the inside. Tries to fire back with a left hand. Escalante continues to pursue. Well, we said in the setup that this would be a terrific fight and not disappointing so far. I thought it would be a very interesting fight because of the temperaments and the style of both these fighters. And so far, not disappointing at all. No, not at all. And it didn't take long at all. I mean, they, the styles just met up right from the start. And, and it's it, been a thing of beauty to watch. And, Joe, sometimes you get the boxer who's supposed to be locked. And their temperament is not to meet fire with fire. So it might not be, you know, most of the pressure to make a great fight is on the aggressive guy. But not in this case. The temperament of Locke, even though physically and mentally he should be on the outside boxing, the temperament is to engage you, to fight you. He doesn't shy away. That's part of why we're getting what we're getting. And again, one of the things that really hurts Locke, with all the talent he has, the kind of body that sets up well to fight on the outside, he doesn't snap that jab enough. Doesn't do something sometimes behind the jab at the right distance. He covers. He allows guys to get in. He allows you to get close. And if you're the kind of boxer that Locke is, for the most part, your priority, what you're really concentrating on, is not to let guys get close. Right hand from Escalante, left hand, and he goes down. Cornelius Watt goes down after that exchange. Looked like a good body shot. Here comes the power of Escalante. And again, being allowed to get close. But do not forget, Locke has quick hands. Locke has plenty of heart. And he can punch inside those wide shots of Escalante. Do not think Locke can still not get a chance here. He can get an opportunity, maybe to catch Escalante getting a little fat. Right hook, straight left from Cornelius Locke. And another body shot from Escalante. And a left hook, right uppercut. He goes down a second time. Seconds to survive, and he does.